Hey friends, it's Kay. Welcome back to the channel. And it is the end of January. When I'm filming this, it's actually January 30th. So we have already been through one month in 2024 and that is frightening. I feel like it was just the end of 2023 and now it is the end of January, 2024. So it's time to do our monthly reset for February. I... I'm, I can't believe it's almost February. I'm like just thrown back by that information, but let's go ahead and look back at January and see how we did on our goals and let's set some goals for February. If you like this video, give it a big like and uh, let's get started. If you're new to my channel and you've never seen this template before, this is the template made by my friend, Katie Calloway. Uh, I will link her channel down below in the description, but she has made this monthly reset template that I have been using to reflect on a previous month or a month that has recently passed and plan my goals and aspiration for the next month. I find this to be very helpful and also good to just remind yourself that you haven't gotten like exactly zero done in an entire month because sometimes you feel like you have all of these things happening in the background and you just, there's things that you leave undone. And if you remind yourself that you actually did do some things over the past month, it can make you feel a little less uh, bad about yourself, if you know what I'm saying, and make you, you know, and give you a realistic idea of like how much you're able to actually accomplish and how motivated you are and what your goals actually are, to be honest. Like you can track your behavior and if you, you can decide whether or not all these goals are aspirations for somebody you want to be or for who you really are. And we are going to just talk about that today. My headphones just turned off because there's no noise. So I might as well just take these off. I don't even know why I have these on. I'm probably talking too loud with them on anyway. So I do have a little cappuccino I made for today. So let's talk about December. So we talked about all of these things in December, which we were gonna do in January, which was really fun. And so let's talk about our goals and habits that we were supposed to do in January. Okay, so I haven't even filled this out yet. So this is, we're like really, we're doing this together. We're doing this together. So what did we accomplish in January? Hmm. You know what? I'm actually gonna do this off camera and then we'll talk about it. All right, I am back. <laughs> so I put together some really brief thoughts about this month. And so we're gonna talk about it. So in January, we uh, did a number of things. We won an audition, which was really great. Uh, I really needed a win. Like I really, really needed a win. And that was uh, really important to me. If you didn't see the last video um, and you're interested in that, highly recommend that you go and watch it. But um, it's long story short, I really needed to like actually win an audition. <laughs> so this was really good. Um, I took a voice lesson and I'm taking a voice lesson with a different teacher. I still have my old voice teacher, um, but I'm seeing them now like co-currently at the same time. Um, she recommended, my old voice teacher recommended that I take some lessons or co-currently take lessons with one of her colleagues because she has a similar voice type to me and could maybe put her finger on some of the things that I was trying to uh, solve or improve. And that is actually the case. She's helping me a lot. And I'm really, really happy with the progress I've made with her. And I'm really looking forward to having, um, you know, a few more lessons with her. I have one on Saturday that's scheduled. So I'm really excited about that. Uh, I, pres I posted to the Organized Soprano five times in January, which um, is good for me. I have been really hesitant to post to that channel because it has so many subscribers and it it has become intimidating and like not fun. And so I just took all of the pressure off of the performance of the channel and I just posted whatever I wanted. And it's not the best strategy like in a like very algorithmic kind of way and it's not the best strategy to grow, but it was a good strategy for me to overcome the hump of not posting at all and it's giving me a lot of good momentum. And so I think I'm gonna continue to do that even if the videos don't perform very well. Like I think four out of the five I posted were like 10 out of 10 or nine out of 10. So they were not great 
performing, but they were content and um, there were content that I did not mind making. <laughs> so I'm gonna continue to do that and see how I feel about it at the end of my, I guess, experiment. Um, the last video actually I posted is doing really well uh, according to the analytics. It was one out of 10. Now it's dropped down to two out of 10. So it, that's really positive to see. It's, it is disincentivizing to get that 10 out of 10 ranking when you go into your YouTube studio, which is why I don't go into YouTube studio on the Organized Soprano very much um, because I just want to ride off of the, the momentum of just posting and not worrying about how it's performing, but we're doing okay. And I finished my freaking website last month, which took me a total of, five, I wanna say like five days, but it was just like, a, it was literally, it was a pain in my ass. I'm not even gonna be, I'm not even gonna front like it's not, but I think it looks really good. It looks good on desktop. It doesn't look good on mobile right now. So I'm gonna have to spend probably a couple more days optimizing it for mobile, but it does look really good on desktop. There are a couple of errors in it that my friend pointed out to me that I have to fix, but it's up and that is really, that's that's a net win for me. So that's really good. So self-care last month included being gentle with myself during practice sessions. I try not to judge the sounds coming out of my mouth when I'm practicing music. Um, and that's been actually really good. I continue to move my body, meaning, meaning exercise, go for walks. Um, and I continue to prioritize uh, nutrition. I, I, eventually I'm gonna probably stop putting that there. I didn't put anything in key, key lessons and takeaways, which was funny. Um, because the diet change, which has now been eight months now, um, has become a way of life that's not challenging anymore. And I now view, like I, I don't have the temptations of like, oh, there's lemon cookie there. Do I wanna eat it? The answer is probably no. Um, because uh, after, I don't know if, if any of you have experienced this before, but after a few months of not eating, um, like really sweet refined sugar things, when you do eat them, they are cloyingly sweet and a little bit nauseating. So I don't feel tempted to eat those kinds of things. I do feel tempted to eat French fries because they still smell good to me, but that's something that I think is just going to happen. I, I feel like just like somebody who stopped smoking, who uh, is smells cigarette smoke and still gets the craving to smoke, I think that's just a thing I'm gonna have to live with. So. Um, because I can't moderate myself when it comes to these kinds of things. Like if there's a, a French fry, I'm not gonna eat just one. I'm gonna eat the whole serving of fries, plus more, plus I want more. So um, I think that I will probably stop saying that unless I relapse somehow, but I I don't think I, I will at this point because the, the consequence for not doing it at this point physically is, is too great. Um, so, it's just, I think that's, this is the last month I'll talk about it as being like a goal or, you know, something I'm proud of happening. Anyway, um, so what challenged me? Finish, finishing my website challenged me. It did. Like that was, I could have hired someone to do it, but it's really expensive. I don't really want to, that's not how I want to spend my money. <laughs> and so if I can do it, and it's, but it's gonna take a lot of activation energy. I will do it, but it was just, it know that it was really challenging. Um, and I had the courage to send my audition materials to a complete stranger almost, not, not, not a stranger, but an organization where I don't have an ongoing relationship with them. Like I don't know the music director. I don't know anybody that works there. Um, actually, and I actually got a rejection letter from them. Um, which kind of hurt my feelings a little bit, but like they were like, oh, we received over a hundred applications, blah, blah, blah. So um, it's fine. I just, the, the fact that I got the courage to actually like send a recording and send my resume and all that stuff was a big hump for me. And it's not gonna discourage me from doing it again, I think. So I'm just gonna keep putting myself out there. Key lessons and takeaways, I put nothing there. So I guess we're not gonna talk about that. Um, notables from last month, I really don't travel that much and I, I didn't read any books last month. I did listen to Andrew Huberman a lot um, and moreover, I listened to um, the podcast about uh, mental health and diet plus the podcast about uh, happiness and the one about caffeine. I, I know that I talked about the one about alcohol 
in December, which is what actually got me to stop consuming alcohol altogether. Um, because I'd been thinking about it for a while. And then that I, the, the two hours of like scientific information about the, the benefits of drinking versus the benefits of not drinking kind of put me over the edge. So I've decided for myself that it's no longer serving me to consume alcohol. So I just quit. And it's been like a, a couple of months. It's been a couple, it's been like, I think my first day was December 1st. Um, and I am tracking my sobriety days because I feel like it's uh, important to see how long I've been not drinking to see how it affects me physically. And so far it's been only good. So um, anyway, I thought I'd put that out there. Um, for the people, the girls, and when I say the girls, I mean my best friends. I have three really good friends that are, um, have been my friends since grad school and I kind of just refer to them as the girls. And we actually haven't spent a lot of time together physically last month, but we had a couple of Zoom meetings and it's just been really great to like connect with the girls. Um, cause it's just, it's just really important to make those face to face contacts with people that's I like zoom actually I mean it's not as good as being with somebody in person but it's better than a phone call for me <laughs> so because you can see people's face and all that stuff so the girls for movies and tv I did watch saltburn and I really like I know everyone's talking about saltburn let me just say that like saltburn is the kind of movie if you're like really conservative and like can't handle it do not watch this movie you will be scandalized but if you are if you if, if nothing if no holes barred for you i highly recommend it if you like weird psychological thrillers or whatever it is a gr it's disgust the movie's gross um but if you like that kind of thing and i do like i liked mulholland drive um I liked, I liked Saltburn, I liked uh, Hereditary and Midsummer. I liked those films. So if you like those kinds of films, you will like Saltburn. It is like a kind of a slow start, but there's a lot of exposition being built, but it's worth it. It's, I thought it was really interesting. Uh, purchases and products. I brought three or four concert dresses last month. I don't know what's come over. Well, I do know. I think that I've, if I'm concertizing more, I want to have new clothes for that. And I think it also inspires me to get to the point where I can concertize more. So I bought like four concert dresses. I haven't received three of them because they're being made by eShatki, which if you've ever ordered from eShatki, you know that they send amazing things, but they may take a long time. So hopefully they'll come in in the next week or so. Fingers crossed. Um, and I bought new pants from Caraway. I'm, that's really all. I'm waiting for, I'm so desperate to receive them because they're the, like the little mini pan and like little mini like saucepan. So cute. So cute. Because when I make a little omelet, I, I'm going to be like dead, dead cute. De so, so cute. All right. So miscellaneous moments, memories. I'm just excited for the season. I'm excited for the concert season. I, my concert calendar is pretty full up until June. And that for me is really exciting. I have um, a chamber concert in March and I have another St. Matthew Passion to sing in March, which is actually hilarious because the last time I sang St. Matthew Passion was in 20, no, not, not 20, 2003, 2003. So there we're, we're, we're talking 20 years between performances of the St. Matthew Passion. And then all of a sudden I have two. So that's really kind of funny to me and I'll be well prepared. Um, part of me is hoping that they'll ask me to sing in the other chorus for the next performance so that I have some new material to learn so that it's like more interesting, but I don't really have control over that. So we'll see what happens. Um, so let's talk goals for next month. Next month. I'm going to continue to eat well. And I'm going to continue to exercise and survive my new exercise routine. Uh, I've asked my trainer over at Future, which is the app I use to workout my workout fitness app um she makes she makes a fitness program for me and i and i do it it's scheduled um it used to be scheduled three days a week it used to be tuesday thursday and saturday 
And now um, I have I have a different trainer. My old trainer left, and now we have changed that to um, Tuesday, Wednesday. I have a deep stretch. Thursday workout, Friday workout, and Saturday workout. So that's two days off and five days on. I mean, Wednesday is just a deep stretch, but sometimes there's a little bit of, you know, ab stuff in there as well. And I, this is the second week of my new um, amped up workout days. Cause I asked her to add one more day of like actual strength training. And I am tired as hell. I'm gonna tell you right now, I'm tired. I'm sore, um, but I feel okay, right? Like I, I want to, <laughs> I want to have more exercise days than rest days. So, um, and I have these new 10 pound weights, which are still heavy for me. I think in a few months I will increase to like 15, but um, for now they're still challenging for me. Um, and I just want to survive this new <laughs> ramped up workout routine. Um, I mean, eventually I think that it wouldn't be a bad idea to work out every day except for one. So we'll, we'll see what happens. I mean, I don't do a lot of physical stuff otherwise. So I think that it's really important for me to keep that up. Um, so career and business to move down, continue to move down the head voice and increase resonance. This is something I've been working on um, with my voice teacher and hoping that it continues to do well. I really am concerned about next month's concert with the recitative before the aria. And if you're not familiar with that kind of language, I, I'm sorry, I just talk shop all the time. So there's, um, there's arias, which is like the song you have to sing. <laughs> and there's a, sometimes there's a little uh, speech like piece of material before it called recitative. Um, and it's called, it's like to recite. It's kind of, it's very speech like. And, uh, they're, and they're usually, well, they can be longer, but uh, in these kinds of situations, they're kind of short. And in that material, I, I don't feel as ready to rock it. So I'm going to work a lot on that material and hoping that I'll be in a good place by the time we get to performance day. I feel so crazy describing the whole recitative versus aria thing because it just it doesn't seem like information that anybody else really needs to know but i just if it's kind of out of my mouth i just feel like i should explain it um i need to get three good recordings my recordings i made in december are not good so i need to do it again and i'm gonna hire a recording engineer because i have learned the lesson that i cannot do it so and i'm gonna continue to send my materials into organizations that i'm interested in working with hopefully music organizations. We'll see. Uh, and for finance, we're going to continue to prepping for tax season, which is awfully scary. I hate it every year. I like very stressed out, but we're going to do it extra early this year. Um, for personal, I'd like to call my mom a lot more. Um, my mom and I talk maybe like once a week, once every other week. And we don't, I feel like that's not enough. So I'm going to call her a lot more. Um, but she's, she's busy though. She's got like a lot going on. Um, and for self-care, I want to focus on enjoying the process. Sometimes I focus a lot more on the goal and I don't enjoy the process very much. Like I'm just like, oh, I really want to learn this piano piece, but I don't want to practice the actual like fingerings or learn where my fingers go. And that, that's not great. <laughs> so I, I want to like stop, smell the daisies and just enjoy the fact that I am able to do the process. It's kind of like when I broke my ankle and I was unable to walk for 10 weeks, I was in a wheelchair for like three weeks and I had crutches for the remainder of that time. And then I had a cane. Um, I made the conscious, I made a conscious thought. I had the thought when I was injured and unable to walk, it was very depressing that I, when I could walk again, I would never ever take it for granted. And I haven't since. Like when I'm out walking with my dog, I'm like, this is great. I'm so glad I have the ability to walk because I knew I, I experienced the time when I wasn't and I was broken and it was really sad. And so I really would like to stop and enjoy the process a little bit more, even if the process is painful. Like 
practicing piano and practicing individual passages in singing to me is painful work, but it is very valuable. So I'm just gonna allow myself to just go with it. So that that is what's on tap for next month. Uh, I want to know what your top goal for February is. I know that February is one of the, the most depressing months of the year. It's like dark. Well, it's not as dark as December. Like, right, I haven't seen the sun for like a week now. I'm not even exaggerating. It's been cloudy. It's been raining and snowing. And February is the, one of the shortest months of the year. It's Black History Month, which should be great, but like... I feel like that's forgotten about a lot <laughs> and it's got Valentine's Day in it, which is good if you're in a couple, but like depressing if you're single or like kind of, or it can make you feel like obligated to buy your partner chocolates or flowers. It puts a lot of pressure on the day. February can be a tough month. This is what I'm saying. So let me know what your goal is for February. Just any, just one thing, one thing you're going to get done in February. And I just want you to be nice to yourself in February because February can be really hard. I hope you enjoyed today's reset and uh, we'll see how we do again next month. This was good. Bye. Love you.